The governor's office has made it clear to state agencies it wants the Mississippi River to be swimmable and fishable. But right now, parts of the river are polluted. While the MPCA says the upper Mississippi is largely healthy up north, quality drops south of St. Cloud, where metro development and tributaries from agriculture muddy the waters. The National Park Service says stretches of the river exceed water quality standards for things like mercury, bacteria, and sediment. But now the state is taking a huge step to understand how the river is doing today so it can make improvements. Our Aaron Asanzada explains the new concern they're keeping a close eye on. I get a new appreciation for the resources from being out on them and, and actually seeing how they move through the landscape. It winds 650 miles, rushing past the cities, industries, and landscapes that make up Minnesota. But the mighty Mississippi has never gotten this type of attention from water quality professionals. We'll do the one right, right below the bridge here. Crews are testing the entirety of the river from Itasca to Iowa in a single year for the first time. The governor tasked, um, tasked us with, you know, swimmable, fishable is, is the quotable line. Also a first, this part of the testing. The MPCA is looking for PFAS contamination with money from an EPA grant to identify and stop forever chemicals from streaming into the Mississippi. PFAS are a group of manufactured chemicals from industry and consumer products that don't break down in the environment. While research is ongoing, the EPA says exposure to the chemicals can cause human health issues. It's why the federal agency just lowered the amount allowed in drinking water. They go to parts per trillion, which is incredibly sensitive that you you get that low, you're talking like drops in an Olympic swimming pool. Part of the reason why it was chosen is because it is a primary drinking source or potentially could be a primary drinking source. But we're just kind of finding them in places we never expected to find them. We're finding them almost everywhere. Um, and there, being that it is new, there's just a lot of I don't know that goes along with it. What we do up here affects human downstream to the delta of it, to the Gulf of Mexico. So the crew will send these samples into the lab to have those tested, but they're also using tools uh, like this to measure the water clarity out here on the Mississippi. It feels really important. Yeah, yeah it's great. Think of it like a checkup for one of our state's most valuable and powerful resources. Temperature, transparency, levels of pollutants like phosphorus, nitrogen, and ammonia. They're looking at all of it. Crews are also checking fish for those contaminants, and they collect insects too to test in a lab to identify any concerning trends. If we find that the fish community is suffering, uh, maybe the water is too warm and maybe there's a thermal pollution source upstream or it's just too much runoff, that sort of stuff. It's too early to know what this complete snapshot will reveal, but we know that this powerful river is part of our community, our economy, and our health. Maybe you don't use the resource yourself, but maybe you know somebody that does, or maybe uh, future generations of your own will. So um, in Minnesota, we're just trying to be the best stewards that we can be. Aaron Hassanzada, WCCO News. The data from this testing will be available early next year. Then researchers will compare it to 10 year pollution averages to determine which parts of the river are improved or impaired. A full report will be released in 2026. Yeah.